Hey guys, so we're going to be looking at um, question six now, which is the, uh, the beginning of section B. You might be thinking, why on earth is there so many scribbling already? So this is actually the fourth time I have recorded the video because um, I've just had a lot of mistakes so and a lot of interruptions. So I am learning patience, but that's okay. Let's go through this and we can do it. So hopefully this is the last take. This is the most takes I've ever had for a question. So record. Let's jump in. Okay, so section B, we start with functions, okay? Um, and uh, they often ask a lot of interpretation. They're asking, they're looking to see whether you understand what a function is and how they interact with each other, right? With, um, given a specific scenario. So it says here in the diagram below, the graphs f of x equals, I'm just gonna write it out because you probably can't see, um, the root of k of x, where x is the variable, right? And we know that k, right, is a constant. Then we know g of x equals, well, we don't know that it's given that g of x equals log a x, right? So it is a log graph. Remember, a log graph is a form of transformation of a exponential graph, right? So we should be thinking, oh, sorry, I just clicked my ankle. Um, we should be thinking about some of the properties, right, of exponential graphs like asymptotes, right? Look at this here. I've drawn um, G in yellow, right? We see that there's an asymptote on the Y equals, on, on the Y axis, sorry, where X equals zero. You see there's an asymptote there, right? So we should be looking out for some of those. And then they just basically say, this is the origin. So I'll color that in for us. Okay, perfect. And then they've given us this piece of information over here. So they said the graphs of f and g intersect at the point b where b is 3 and 1. That's the ordered pair, right? So x is 3 and y equals 1. So then it says determine the value of x represented on the sketch for which f of x is greater than g of x. So when they're saying the value of x, they're talking about the domain, right? So basically, let me translate this into English. They're saying, <laughs> well, out of maths into English, right? They're saying, where does the graph of F sit above the graph of G? Well, we can see it sits above it there. And from there onwards, right, from B onwards, it sits underneath, right? You could also interpret this as, where does the orange graph sit above the yellow graph? So we know it's between the origin and B. So I'm going to say F of X is greater than G of X for x between 3 and 0. But I've made these strict inequalities with no equality underneath, no little line underneath like that. And you might be saying, Margs, why is that? Well, let's start with 3. At 3, right, we know that they, these two graphs equal each other. But the question hasn't asked us for where they equal each other. It's asked us for where f of x is greater than g of x. So it can't include 3. Now, at the origin, you might say, well, Mark's there. Like, it's clear that f is above g. But we need to remember that at x equals 0, this is a asymptote for g. So g never touches 0, right? Therefore, we cannot include it in this inequality. That's why we use these strict equality signs. I mean, strict inequality signs, right? We don't have an equality underneath like that. So it is between 0 and 3. And this is really a great question to understand, well, to test your understanding of what has been presented, because it's actually a little bit trickier, right? It's testing the restriction, it's testing your understanding of asymptotes, right? And that's why it's a great question to actually gauge whether the student understands. Now, I'm going to cover my answer because I've written it, <laughs> because I don't think it's helpful for you to just see it, right? So it says, determine the values of K and A. Now, K is the unknown in f of x, right? And um, a is the unknown in g of x. So we're going to have to try solve for them. But we know two things. Firstly, that g and f intersected b. But also, we know what the ordered pair at b is. So we can just sub it into the equations we have, right? And we can solve for it. So that is what I have done over here. Okay, I said, well, f of x equals kx. Let's just sub in this point B, subbed it in, right? Then I squared both sides. Now you might be saying, why did you square both sides? Well, I wanted to get rid of this root, right? But whenever we have a root, we always have to check, right, our answer at the end 
to make sure that it makes sense because sometimes we can get a negative, right? And it doesn't actually make sense in the context of our equation. So just remember, 2 squared equals 4, but negative 2 squared also equals 4. But so, so sometimes we can get an answer here that actually makes sense in the squared version of it, but not necessarily in the non-squared version of the equation. Okay, so always go back and check when you have introduced a square. So just gone and solved it, and k equals 1 over 3. If I put 1 over 3 into, um, into this, right, if I put it into this, right, so before this, this step before I squared it, if I put 1 over 3 into there, I get 1 equals 1. So it makes complete sense, okay, and we know that it's correct. Now, let's do g of x. Now, g of x is a little bit more difficult because g of x equals log ax. So a is actually the base of the log, right? So we're going to have to solve for that. But I want us to remember this property here. Log is the same as this, right? Where b becomes the base, the answer becomes the exponent, and a becomes the other side of the equation. How do we do that? Well, if you log both sides, we know that when you log a, a base with an exponent, the exponent can come as, can come down as a coefficient of the log, right? And then you just solve for c, and you see that these are different ways of representing it, right? So what they're asking actually is, do you know this relationship? Do you know this relationship, right? Do you know that these two things, right? It's like a, a two-way street. Okay, so what I've done here is I've put colors to help us go from this form to this form. So I've said, in this case, B is A, right, yellow, yellow, A is 3, and C is 1. So let's transform it into this way. So B is A, C is 1, and A is 3, and then we get that A equals 3. So fundamentally, what they're testing is they're testing whether you understand how to transform between or how to navigate between these two different representations. Okay, really important. It looks complex, but if you understand some basic log rules, um, it actually is not too bad. So it's important to notice here that logs are very useful in finance, but they also come up in functions. So you need to make sure you understand these things. Okay, if you're a bit rusty, I would advise to go and revise. I would advise to revise. Okay, let's now move into the last question. Now, you see my answer? All full out, yeah? So let's just read the question first. It says, define f negative 1. What does that mean? It means the inverse. They gave it to us like, the inverse of f in the form y equals and status domain. When you see the word domain, you should always be thinking x. When you see range, you should be thinking y. It's all these, these words that relate to specific things. So, I said, okay, no problem. f of x equals the square root of 1 over 3, x, right? We, we solve for k up here. So, I just solved, I so, um, substituted k in here. Not a problem. Then I said, okay, well, actually... My inverse, right, and let me just put an extra step in here. My inverse is where x equals 1 over 3 square root y. That's what my inverse is. Then I squared both sides because I want to get rid of the square root, right? The square root is a pain in the bum, right? We want to get, we want to get rid of it. So I squared both sides. But remember, if I was getting a set answer, I'm supposed to check it, okay? In this case, we don't have to because we're getting a general form, but just to bear that in mind. Okay, so now we have x squared equals 1 over 3y. Not a problem. Let's just do it in terms of y. So y equals 3x squared. Okay, so if y equals 3x squared, right, then now that we haven't finished the question. We have to state what its domain is. So we've actually only done one of the two things they've asked us to do. Okay, so you should recognize that this is a parabola. Okay, it is a parabola. So I've put, I've already put the domain, the answer there, but I want to show you why that is the case. So it's a parabola. So what I've done is I've drawn this parabola in. Okay, I've drawn in this parabola. So we see that it is a reflection over the line y equals x. 
And you might be like, oh, what does that mean? Well, effectively, that makes sense, right? Because we swapped Y and X, right? We are reflecting it over that line. So do you see that this is a reflection of that? Now, you could see this very ugly scribbles that I did here. The reason I did that is I drew the full parabola, but if I'm only reflecting this, this graph here, I have to reflect only that side of the parabola because this graph here doesn't have another side here, right? It doesn't have another side, right? In order to be a function, remember, it has to be one to one, right? So it can't go this side. If it goes this side, then it wouldn't be a function because it would be, um, if what is it, what do you call this? The vertical, I think it's a vertical. Yeah, that's vertical. The vertical test, right? It has to only go through it once. So here it's a function. If it goes through twice, then it wouldn't be a function, right? Here it would be a function either way, but it would just be many to one if it was both sides. But again, it's only one to one on the horizontal test. Remember, there's those two tests, horizontal, vertical. You must remember that, okay? So here, we only do the one side of the parabola because we're only reflecting this here, okay? So what we did, we did that, we've reflected it, and we, we can see that it, it's the same as the domain of f, right? It goes from 0 to infinity. So x is greater than 0, and that domain translates into its inverse, right? Still x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so that is that answer there. I hope that was helpful. Um, let's now move on to question seven, which I'm hoping won't take me four takes to do. I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.